Joining us now is Andrew Cherkasky, a former federal prosecutor. So, Andrew, what do you think we're going to learn from the declassified material? Well, beggars can't really be choosers, can they? I mean, we can't be complaining about transparency where Mr. Trump wants to disclose uh, information to the public. I think we're going to learn that investigations often begin with bad information. And it, the question ultimately is, where do you stop? So once you start getting unreliable information, where do you stop? And I think we're going to understand more about how the criminal justice system really works at the top echelon of the DOJ. By the way, just to follow up on this, investigations usually begin with a crime. And that's what made this investigation <laughs> very unusual. There was no crime. Well, right. I mean, we see all the time in, in the criminal justice world an allegation is made. Somebody walks into the police station and they say, John did this to me. Well, is that credible? Is there something that corroborates it? Police don't require that in order to look into the uh, into that allegation. So that type of thing happens all of the time. The question is, where do police stop? When do you mm -hmm. stop getting those subpoenas? Andrew, Gary Smith here. I'm going to ask you a question maybe a little outside your um, uh, scope of knowledge and really more for your opinion. You know, it seems like ever since Trump has become presidency, we've invo been involved in investigation after investigation after investigation. We have a never-ending soap opera going on between the parties. This will open up another can of worms, in my opinion. Do you think overall... Opening these up, declassifying all this information, which will, of course, lead to probably declassifying other investigations, is good for the country. Gary, I think that's a great question. I mean, ultimately, we have investigators in these agencies, and they don't have jobs if they don't investigate. Um, the political right. battles that go back and forth, it is a matter of, of our political checks and balances. It's the multiple uh, branches of government. So I do think that there's a healthy degree of investigating one branch after the other. Um, but when it goes on for too long and when it goes too deep and it doesn't stop when it needs to stop, right. that's a question that needs to be answered. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Adam Lashinsky with Fortune Magazine in San Francisco. Um, first of all, a co quick comment on D to David's point. There was a crime, but several crimes, and Mueller prosecuted that, that several people no, for no, crimes. No, no, you're so wrong. That's, that wasn't why that's this what investigation was, being investigated was started. In it, was the a counter, it was a counterintelligence. There was no crime. There were crimes subsequently found in the investigation, but it did not begin with a crime. The investigation was into Russian interference in U.S. elections. That's where the, that that's counter, where the prosecutions it was a, were. It was not a criminal my, my investigation. It was a counterintelligence investigation. But go ahead. My, my question, Andrew, you mentioned in your opening comment unreliable information. I wasn't sure what you were referring to, and I feel like you have some sort of point you're trying to make with that expression, unreliable information. Well, it's not a point that I'm trying to make necessarily. It's the question where you have the president who has come out so often and said that it started as a witch hunt or started in some sort of fashion that was aimed against him. Well, he wants to know how it began. It's his department. He's allowed to direct and, and it, it, give those investigators a, a path to go. So he's, he's looking into that. I don't think it's going to turn out well for him. I don't think it's going to show that there was an illegitimate basis to begin this investigation. Uh, I think the real question is, should it have stopped it? At a, stop, at a point before it did. Well, that's a great question, Thank Andrew. You. Jackie DeAngelis in New York. My question to you is this. The president's demonstrated he, he's an eye for an eye kind of guy, and he feels that declassifying the information and getting to the bottom of what started the probe, if it was started um, in a surreptitious kind of way, is really important to, but, um, to sort of stop the dialogue, to put an end to this, because the Democrats are saying, Nancy Pelosi is still saying there's a cover-up. She can't tell you what, the, what is being covered up. Right. So do you think do well, you think that this will in fact achieve what the president is looking for and maybe just put a stop to this at, at some point? I think there's a degree of this that's personal. The president really wants to get at what started this. I don't think that's going to reflect that there was any real illegal conduct that took place. There may have been certain investigators who turned a blind eye when they shouldn't have, or perhaps they could have gone to the FISA court a little bit sooner to correct some of the information. And that's issues that should be addressed. But in terms of developing some sort of record that there was truly illegal conduct that took place, I don't think we're going to see that. And uh, truly, the American justice system doesn't answer for that. We have a justice system that allows people to start investigations based on uh, very thin information. That's, that's how investigations often turn up real crimes. 
Andrew, uh, I'm an MBA. The only thing I know about the law is from watching Law and Order. So I want to ask you kind of like a Good basic, show. <laughs> basic question here. Like, let's just pretend hypothetically it was totally improper. And that I would argue the FBI probably starts a lot of things that way. But does that mean like the stuff they find is thrown out? Is it like when the cops like give you don't have a warrant and they bust you with drugs and then you get off anyway? Because they didn't. Is that what it's going to be like? Or like he actually thinks it's in trouble anyway? Asking. Is it like that? Or how does it work? Uh. Well, I went to a great law school, but most of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is based off of what I learned on uh, Law & Order. So <laughs> from that perspective, also. I'll tell you, it's, at this point, it's, it's really political. I, so I think that the president really wants answers. There isn't going to be some sort of revelation that something wasn't done exactly perfect and things are thrown out. There's no criminal process taking place. This isn't like evidence that's getting thrown out in a courtroom. This is, I think, mud getting thrown around in, in uh, Washington, as it usually does. All right, Andrew, switching gears for second Com congressman jerry nadler says that robert Mueller is willing to testify before congress but he says that he wants it to be private testimony what do you make of that mm -hmm. Well, I think there's all sorts of reasons. I'm going to start with the most practical reasons, and that's because Mr. Mueller is afraid to go in front of uh, Congress in public because he has so much that he is obligated to keep private. Things like classified information, things like information that came out of grand jury testimony, and things in ongoing investigations. It is very difficult to parse through all of that in a very complex investigation when you're trying to answer qu uh, questions from Congress people yeah. off the cuff. So that's realistically what I think is going on, but there are things we could look into it and, and read into it if we if we wanted to speculate. Hey, Andrew, very quickly, if, in fact, we find out from the declassifications that anti-Trump forces in the FBI and the CIA worked together and lied, in fact, to get that, that FISA warrant to spy on the Trump campaign, could somebody go to jail? Absolutely. If people were lying in their official documents that they're sending on those warrants, people go to jail. But there are typically very good people uh, in the DOJ and the FBI, as far as I'm concerned, and the people I've worked yeah. with. So I would find that unlikely. But well, we're going we've seen, to jail we've seen the memos. Jail. We've seen some very disturbing memos that indicate that not everybody there was on the up and up. But Andrew, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Well,